Libido Doctor <laughs> is in. Hello and welcome to Libido Doc, a place where we talk about human sexuality with a focus on married women. I'm Dr. Suzanne and today I would like to talk about resentment in high-powered couples. The topic is divided in seven sections. First, we have a few definitions. Then we talk about the root cause of resentment, the anatomy of the attack, because in the couple, there will be uh, one who is attacked and one who is the receiver of the attack. We talk about the effect on the victim. Uh, we give a few examples. One of the examples is going to be from Joseph in the Bible. And we look at an example where the wife is the attacker and another example where the husband is the attacker. Then we talk about the process of healing and finally the reward that the attacker gets from the resentment. All right, so a few definitions. First of all, what is a power couple? A power couple is the combination of a man and a woman, in our case, what we're discussing, who are influencers, they are high achievers, they are public figures, and they have a lot to lose. They care about their reputation and they pay attention to how they behave in public. As compared to a couple with no power, where they don't care what the public thinks, first of all, nobody knows them, and there is a lot of domestic violence and abuse going on in that situation. We're not talking about this type of couple. We're talking about um, the high income earners, uh, high figures, educated, high class uh, society couple. Okay, so now what is the definition of resentment? Resentment is a bitter indignation at having been treated unfairly according to one's expectations. So the person who is feeling resentful has some expectations that are not met and all of a sudden um, they feel a kind of way towards the other person. We also have to insist that this happens in a relationship. In our case, uh, you know, the, the focus of our platform is the couple, the married couple between uh, a husband and a wife. So it's a situation where it's not easy to just cut off and move on, okay? We have to understand that because this is the reason why the attacker is going to use certain strategies we will discuss. Now, what is the root cause? The root cause is always competition. And that stems from the fact that the couple might be in the same field, okay? They could have the same type of degree or they could work on the same kind of platforms. Maybe they are politicians, maybe they are lawyers, uh, maybe they work in the tech industry, uh, maybe they are doctors, architects, um, even high profile pastors who are married to pastors. So usually there is, there is a common ground. I would say there is a common ground that causes the competition to occur. Uh, that competition, because the person who is feeling resentful begin to harbor envy. And the envy causes a feeling of shame on that person because they believe that they're supposed to have what the other person is having as far as recognition, fame, attention, um, 
you know, anything like that, because they feel that they are not receiving what the other person is receiving, the resentment takes the form of envy. From the envy, they get angry. So envy, anger, then pride kicks in because they feel that they are deserving, but they don't receive what they want. And they begin to see the other person as the cause of the issue because the other person is shadowing them and make them look bad or cause them to feel ashamed of themselves because they're not achieving as much. They don't want to be in the shadow. Okay? So now, once anger settles in, they begin to devise very strategic attacks. And this is the anatomy of the attack. So first of all, because they know their partner so well, they know their weak points, they know their aspirations, they know what they want to achieve that will give them joy. They begin to set traps around those expectations to kind of make sure it doesn't occur a hundred percent. Or they want to make sure that they get a part of the reward or the praise concerning that particular achievement. But they have multiple weapons. The first one is manipulation. They manipulate people to make everyone believe that they have so much influence on the other person that they can, they can cause them to change their decisions or they can cause them to favor certain people. So they want to appear as the gatekeeper or the middle person through whom people must go through in order to have access to the higher achiever of partner. That's one. Then two, they tend to softly reverse your decisions in your back. You know, like uh, something that's not clear cut. Um, you clearly wanted something to happen but they went behind and they told the people, oh, don't worry about that. Uh, it's not going to be a big deal. Let's just do this way. But they know what they're doing because they are reversing your order. But they're making it appear as if you are agreed to have the order reversed. Okay? So, the third way they um, attack is to either in private remind you that you're getting so big because of them. They remind you of the sacrifice they're going through to help you be on the platform. They remind you that it's because of them that the platform was even set up and you just there forgetting that they are the architect of your success. So in private, they will tell you things like that. In public, they have a subtle way to remind you in front of others that they know better, that they help you prepare. You know, for example, um, you could be in a conversation with friends and you say something casually, but they correct you. You know, they either correct the, the, the idea, uh, the number of, uh, you know, whatever you wanted to say. But anyway, they correct you in public. And they correct you in such a way that shows others that they know more about the process and they have all the details. Therefore, they are the one helping you to even say what you're saying. It's very subtle, okay? And then, the fourth way they attack is by withdrawing the encouragement. 
they don't encourage you they don't praise you uh, they don't uh, uplift you when you really need them they just they just keep quiet okay so the fifth way they can attack is by being more vocal in accusing you and sometimes it can get up to contempt when a situation arises instead of paying attention to finding solutions to the problem they begin to accuse you of being responsible for the problem okay so these are the different ways in which they attack now what happens when you are on the receiving end of these attacks when you are the victim first of all you are surprised that's the first emotion because you don't understand that this person who is your other half or your brother or the person you love so much is talking to you that way and is doing these things so it's very confusing right but the first emotion is the surprise and it takes a long time to even understand what's going on behind the scenes then because of the public attacks and the, the reversal of your decisions in your back where you, you, you feel that you're losing uh, authority you feel ashamed then shame is the second emotion and then the third one is fear because you feel that there's something that's not right uh, around what's happening but you can't really put your finger on it then anxiety settles because you don't know when they will attack you publicly or try to shame you in front of the whole world depending on your platform right so now the victim becomes um, fearful and begins to operate at lower vibrations those lower vibrations open up the door for others now the outsiders to attack you you notice that anything you do is contested but there are specific people that will come to attack you in the same way your partner attack you silently but those other people will be very loud they're not going to try to hide they will uh, accuse you falsely accuse you they will um, just destroy your name they will launch a character assassination they will um, gang up orders against you and you will not understand why all of this is happening but it's because someone an insider has already mapped these subtle attacks now the outsiders are taking it to the next level so if we take the example of joseph joseph was the son of the second wife jacob really loved he was a child of his love and the siblings his brothers perceived it and resented him because they became envious of what he had he had the love and the attention of the father he had the coat of multiple colors he was the little favorite who would go and uh, do whatever he wanted but he was also the child who had dreams he would come and tell about to the parents to the family to the siblings and he was also the one who was accusing reporting his brothers to the father so because of that he was in a position of um, uh, light right he was he was seen more than them envy started based on the competition because the siblings also want the parents attention and 
based on the dreams, it appeared as if Joseph was telling them that he's superior to them. So they perceived it. And because in this competition, envy settled in, they wanted to have something Joseph had and they couldn't have it. Even though they felt that um, they deserved it, then shame comes in when he accuses them or where they feel inferior because they're not able to have even just the gift of dreams they were not able to have that uh, they feel ashamed because they feel ashamed they have to have a revenge plan so if in the case the accusations of joseph did not affect his relationship with the father they would go the extra mile and that's why we see at some point they plotted to kill him. But instead of killing him, they ended up selling him to some merchants because they couldn't stand having him around anymore. Nothing was working to bring Joseph's low self-esteem down, so he calms down. So the solution for them was to cut up with him and get him out of the family. So that's the first phase. Uh, Joseph was probably surprised by his brother's reactions. He felt fearful, anxious for being thrown uh, in the pit or sold uh, to merchants. And he felt ashamed because now he was going to be a slave, right? So this is what the victim goes through. Now, he gets in that class of victimhood and he still tries to do his best because he has the spirit of excellence. But because his brothers started the attack, now outsiders, we take it to the next level. That's when we see Potiphar's wife attacking him, accusing him of what he didn't do, and he ends up in prison. Okay, so now let's look in life what could happen in power couples when it's the wife who is attacking and when it's the husband who is attacking. So our first case study is going to be a case when the wife is the attacker. Let's take a power couple like pastors. Prominent pastor, uh, husband, prominent pastor, wife. Both of them are gifted. They have the gifts of the spirit. They have amazing um, uh, expressions of the gift. But let's say the husband's gift is louder, meaning it attracts more attention. And it could be the gift of prophecy or the gift of healing, for example. But people are attracted to us because we feel their needs, because we give them immediate answers and we help them uh, gain something they felt they lost. So let's say in this case, the husband attracts more of the people because he's able to feel their immediate needs but the wife has deeper gifts maybe she has the gift of uh, prophecy also but in a different way maybe she has the gift of um, you know discernment of spirits maybe she has something else but the point is her gift does not allow her the same visibility as her husband. Therefore, she becomes resentful because she feels that uh, she, she, she's supposed to be on the same level. And it could also be that maybe the husband, you know, had made some promises, maybe you're gonna preach uh, every other Sunday, or oh, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, and it's not happening. So she feels that she's being treated unfairly, and she becomes envious. 
why she feels <laughs> entitled. All that's happening is partly uh, because of her, uh, she has contributed, how come she's not getting the reward? That envy settles in. Then anger and pride cause her to launch very subtle attacks, micro attacks. Now women don't act the same way as men when they are the attacker. They are more subtle. So first of all, she will make sure uh, that people around her know that she has the most influence on her husband. If you want something from her husband, you have to go through her, which is, you know, normal in a couple, but it goes to a higher extent. For example, if the husband does not want to have a relationship with someone and she's away, that person will go through her to restore relationship with her husband. And she wants to make sure that people know that it's because of her that the relationship was restored. That's a form of manipulation, right? But to the husband, she's going to make it appear as if she's a peaceful person. That's one. Then two, the other thing she could do, because she controls a lot of the operations, she can begin to reverse a few little decisions, you know, quietly, just very subtle. Now, when it comes to public attacks, they will uh, contradict the husbands in public. You know, the women that are very entitled, that's what they do. They correct you in public. They don't do exactly what you said needs to be done. They don't give you a hundred percent of their attention in public. You know, they there, but I see they're not there. You know, you could go to an official function and she's just gonna run her own minds and do whatever she wants while being by your side, you know? So that's a quiet rebellion that she's doing. And then she can withdraw her encouragement and her praise, right? Going further, this will sometimes affect the intimacy, the physical intimacy, the, the sexual relationship. That's when sometimes you begin to see a decrease in libido in women. They don't want their husbands to touch them anymore. Uh, we can really pinpoint what's happening but she's not really uh, in the mood of doing something. And if, for example, she was uh, in your intimacy time, she was doing something very special, or she, you guys had a ritual, she begin to withdraw that also. She begin to cut it off, right? She can just uh, make herself available just to release you from the sexual tension you may have, but it's not, it's not that anymore. It's not that uh, intimate, like you know, anymore, because resentment is already settled in. But the Bible says in Proverbs 12 and 4, that an excellent wife is as a crown to her husband, but she that shames him is as rottenness to his bones. And the example of this kind of attitude is seen in the Bible with Vashti. Vashti, who was a queen, called by her husband, who decided to shame him publicly. No matter what reason she had, she shamed him publicly, right? And because of that, she became a rottenness to his bones to the point where he had to depose her. He had to get rid of the queen because the contempt was taking another dimension. That's usually what happens. When the, the wife is the attacker, she's very subtle. You know, she does a lot of things undercover 
and then from time to time you see um, something that pops up in public and then you ask yourself what just happened huh <laughs> something is going on undercover okay so now if we look at an example where the husband is the attacker what happens is that let's say they are both in the same field let's say let's take the case of uh, a couple of architects they can work in the same firm or a different firm but the wife is gifted with a different vision you know an artistic vision that causes her to be the one who gets more projects, more uh, money, more recognition, more praise. As the wife, she will take the money, the praise and all that and reinvest it in the household. Reinvesting in the household, she will help the family get to a higher uh, uh, lifestyle, uh, better access to different things, maybe a better house, uh, better cars, uh, better schools for the kids and you know different things like that. But she's still very submissive to her husband. The husband will not see that, right? He will feel resentful because he's the man. He's supposed to be the leader. He's supposed to be the head and not the tail. Therefore, he will begin to attack the wife. It's very subtle, you know, because he already knows that he has authority. He's the authority of the house. He doesn't need to show people that he's the influencer. He doesn't need to show people that uh, they have to come through him to make the wife uh, you know, change her mind or, on certain things like the women attackers do, right? He doesn't need to do that. So that's one thing he doesn't do. But what he would do, first, he can withdraw his encouragement because, you know, women love when their husband praise them, when uh, the husband approves of what she does, even when she doesn't need his approval, she will still go to him and say, hey, look, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. What do you think? Especially if they are in the same field. You know, let's say the woman architect comes up with a, 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 a project or a concept and she will go to the husband and ask him, what do you think, honey? This is what I'm doing. He will withdraw encouragement. He will not really give a, an appropriate feedback and he will find faults. In what she's doing he would try to break her ideas by um, belittling her her hard work that's how men would act and then the second thing he begin to accuse her accuse her of any little thing if something doesn't work yes it's your fault you always do this you always do that this accusation and this contempt the husband brings in the house, wears the woman down to the point where her libido goes down because trust in the woman, trust begins to break. It's, a, it's an issue of trust, okay? So she doesn't want to open herself up to this husband anymore because she doesn't know if she can really trust him. And at this point, he's a husband. He's not a king anymore. He's not the king of her heart because he's, he's poking at her heart so much that he cannot be her king. But she's still gonna be there. She's going to honor him. She's still gonna be by his side, by his side. She's still going to do whatever she's supposed to do. And when they are intimate, she might not be as active as she used to be because you know her heart is not right. Okay, so this is the, 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 the anatomy of the attacker in real life examples. Now, when you get to that point, 
and you realize what's happening, you realize that there might be an issue of resentment, you have to go through a healing process. The healing process requires a time of isolation to reflect on things that are happening. In the case of Joseph, he had to be in the prison. And when he went to the prison, he probably reflected and asked himself, where did that start? How do I end up in prison? Where did all this start? So he had to go back to his father's house to find the root cause of his problems. The root cause of his problems was that envy, the spirit of envy. So when you find yourself in a marriage relationship in which your spouse is displaying signs of envy, you have to go back to your roots, to your family roots, to figure out where it came from because that spouse of yours, you attracted them. You attracted them with your level of consciousness you had from your father's house. You have to go back to the little child, in, in this case, Joseph, to the little child who got attacked by his brother, but didn't have the understanding to deal with that at that time. So you do an introspection and you, you, you remember all those times your older brother attacked you, beat you down, accused you, um, falsely made statements against you. And at that time you were feeling powerless, but it was being written on your heart. It was causing trauma. It was causing um, shame in your heart. It was causing hopeless, hopelessness. And you kept it, you suppressed it, you kept it, and you ran with it in life, right? So you have to heal the little boy. You have to heal the little girl. You have to go back and visualize and remember and heal your heart, forgive them. And imagine the scenario where you actually rescue from the attacks. Because you don't want to stay in the lower vibration. When you stay in the lower vibration, you attract the same kind of people in your life. They come in different faces. You know, your spouse, your best friend, your cousin, uh, a business partner, uh, someone, someone. They come in different faces different bodies but it's the same spirit that you are attracting in your life you have to hear you have to disconnect you have to to reject that spirit and you have to forgive joseph forgave his siblings even before he saw them he had decided that he was going to disconnect from the father's house and forgive them. Once you do that, once you get to the point where you let go and you go to higher vibration, when you choose love, when you choose joy for yourself, when you choose happiness, you begin to vibrate at a higher dimension. And when you vibrate at that higher dimension, you will attract a whole new kind of people that are coming to reward you, to love you, to elevate you. And that's what happened with Joseph. Joseph began to attract other people. You know, he was in the prison with members of the government. That's elevation. And because of that, there was a door open to his reward and Pharaoh rewarded him and allowed him to achieve his destiny. <laughs> when he saw his brothers, he told them, 
You meant this for evil. Oh, Jesus Christ. They don't know that even when they attack you, even when they destroy you, they are helping you get to your higher vibration, to your higher level of achievement. He was born for such a time as this. He was born to deliver people from dying from famine. He was born to have that assignment, right? And he, he, he still fulfilled the assignment. Hey, Jesus Christ. So now, when you are in your couple and you are the husband that is being attacked, by Vashti, God will send you Esther. God will send you Queen Esther. She will love you. She will adore you. She will revere you. She will be in awe of everything you do. And she will never compete with you. Because she's not even going to be in the same area. You know, like the same um, field. But she will understand what you do. She will uplift you. She will, she will help you heal. That's what you get as the husband. And as the wife who is being attacked by this husband who doesn't understand your destiny, God will send you a Boaz. Someone that will love you. That will cherish you that will give you your own platform to excel, to do better. And guess what? You're going to be in the line of Jesus. <laughs> All right. Well, you will actually achieve your assignment because each one of us has an assignment. Each one of us on this earth, we have to remember that we are spirits in a body. We are sent on this earth to achieve something. We're not just here to look cute. We're not just here to talk, right? We are here to achieve an assignment from the true will of heaven. That's why we move with the Holy Spirit. In Him we have a being. In him we move. And the Bible says that there is a spirit in man. There is a spirit in man. And the spirit of God gives him inspiration. So what you do, the ideas you have, all those thoughts, those, those big thoughts that are bigger than yourself, and all those things you want to do, those are glimpses of your assignment. And that spirit of the Lord keeps telling you, keeps nudging you, do this, do that. And it's the spirit that helps you. You know, all that we achieve. The Bible says that those that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. It's not by our might. It's not by our power. It's by the spirit of God. You see this hand. This hand, my fingers don't have the same height. Right? So this one, this one, is it the shortest or the tallest? Each one of us has an assignment. There is no need to be envious, jealous, to get angry, to manipulate. Each one of us has an assignment. We have one life to live. We have an assignment. We have something to do on this earth. Right? So if God picked you and he gives you the platform, Satan is also looking for someone around you that will hinder you. Someone he can use. Even though they say they are from God, they allow those little spirits, they allow those little tiny spirits to come spoil the whole basket. Right? So we have to be very careful. What is the healing process? The healing process is first recognition, second 
introspection, forgiveness, understanding of what's happening, and you as the victim, you have to, to rise your vibration. You have to seek different connections because when you elevate, then the, the, the people who are assigned to help you with your next step will begin to show up. We begin to show up and they will help you reach your maximum. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are in a marriage relationship and you are going through this, what are your options? <laughs> Based on the Bible, God totally removed the spouse that was toxic. <laughs> so, in the case of Vashti, she was deposed and Esther was made the queen. In the case of um, Ruth, she had to completely leave her country to find her boy. In a lot of high power couples, there is divorce. But sometimes, the couples don't want to separate because there is so much entangled especially financially you have the children you have friends you have the same um, circles you have the lifestyle sometimes couples choose not to divorce they decide to stay together if that's the case then you need to have deep repentance you are uh, in fact you need heavy deliverance because all those spirits that are attacking, the spirit of envy, jealousy, those are spirits. Remember that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, all those, all those entities that we do not see with our eyes. They can, they can find a nice little spot in people around you and begin to fight you so those people we need deliverance we need deep deliverance repentance holy forgiveness like the holy spirit has to overwhelm you you forgive and you forget <laughs> but sometimes it's better to move on because the real issue sometimes here is that while one spouse is improving, you know, working on self-development, working on uh, becoming the better version of themselves, the other spouse who is the attacker does not work on themselves because maybe they are busy or they have a different view of how things are supposed to happen. So the spouse who is working on themselves reaches a, a higher vibration faster than the other spouse, right? That's why this spouse here, who is the attacker, feels the need to bring you down to the level because you're going too, you, you're going too far high. They want to bring you down. Sometimes there's no remedy. Sometimes, really, you have to leave this spouse to find the person who is going to be at the same level of vibration and you have to find the spouse that is at your level of vibration so you can meet, continue your assignment and actually achieve the reason for which you were sent on earth. <laughs> All right, there you go. So. Why do we talk about this? This affects a lot of couples. High power couples, they just keep quiet because they don't want blog media <laughs> to destroy their reputation. But nobody really knows what happens in the household. Nobody really knows. Only God knows. And when that God, you know, if you are a Christian, not everybody believes in God. But if you're a Christian and you really obey God, 
you honor him you follow him one day one day he will honor you he will elevate you and the people will be surprised because they only see at eye level <laughs> they don't see the spiritual dimension they be surprised and they will attack you and the attacker here who's been attacking you your whole life we begin to play victim. Oh, he did this to me. She did that to me. She's so mean. She wasn't even giving me that thing. She was... <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is the deal. Well, <laughs> resentment is a real threat in high power couples. We need to be careful. When you begin to notice the first signs, stop it very quickly. Stop it very quickly. Have an open discussion. Figure out what will make the other person who is feeling uh, lower. Figure out what will make them happy. Have an open discussion. And at the end of the day, they have to understand that you're not your own. You belong to God. You have an assignment. You're supposed to do something on this earth. They're supposed to be your help, your helper. Okay? But if they don't want to do what God would like you to do, if they don't want to do what God sent them for in your life, God will replace them. There's already a replacement. <laughs> Before the foundation of the world, before you know when when you were born god was had already prepared a replacement for the wife he had initially given to you in the same manner god had already prepared a replacement for the husband he had already given to you and the funny thing is that sometimes they are born in the same generation the husbands are born in the same generations the wives are born close to the same generations, but God has the final say. Resentment is a trick of the devil. I urge wives and husbands to be careful. When you get married, you, you, you recite this voice. Eh? I will love you. I will cherish you. What part of jealousy do you find in love? What part of jealousy? In 2 Corinthians 13, if you read that very carefully, you will read at some point that love is not jealous. Love does not boast. Which part of love are you showing your spouse when you bring envy? When you bring manipulation, when you bring shame in public, when you bring accusation, when you bring contempt, when you bring... Oh, please, if you are a wife doing that to your husband, you need to stop it now. If you are a husband doing that to your wife, you need to stop now because before you know it, God will remove them from your life. And then you're going to begin to cry. Oh, please forgive me. I'm not. Mm. Please. <laughs> well, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for listening. If you want um, a recap, today we talked about the, the effect of resentment in high power couples. Couples who have a lot to lose. Okay, where one spouse uses different weapons that are stemming from resentment to attack and to belittle the other spouse. We discussed the, the anatomy of the attack. We talked about uh, how the victim feels. We used the example of Joseph. And then we, we came to the conclusion that there is always a Queen Esther and there is always a Boaz. For the victims of this resentment in couples. 
And most of all, it affects the libido. It affects the sexual connection in the couple. And when that happens, because the vibrations are so low, you begin to notice that you don't even have those big achievements. You're not even making that much money. Things are becoming sour. It's, it all stems from that resentment. Please, if you are a spouse harboring resentment, you need to do some introspection. You need self-healing. You need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive the people who caused you the trauma. And you need to declare that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Because joy, happiness, and love are higher vibration. And at the end of the day, God is love. Love casts out all fear. And God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of love and the sound mind. Please, this mind, use it to break down what you do that is not right and please change it in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for listening. And I'll see you next time. Bye.